With that, we say what's up on this championship Saturday. I'm Lou Ketrick. No one was shocked by the fact that Alabama came into the swamp daunting two touchdown favorites. They're already cleaning up the court, ripping it up for a Solar Bears game tomorrow night, which is good because uh, I don't think anyone really wants a memory of this game anymore. What do these picks that they made tonight and 33's coming say about who this franchise wants to be moving forward? That awkward moment when you say, hey coach, break a leg. Vroom, vroom, here's your party starter. Steve Clifford probably said it best. It's just too personal to discuss right now. And that's just not the feeling here for the Magic, but really across the entire NBA because someone had a personal connection to Kobe Bryant. Chris Mueller's playing status hasn't really been a topic of conversation, yet at the same time, it's something that we've constantly wondered about. Dan Mullen asked Point Blank if he is now coaching for his job. Shocking news today, Orlando City star Nani will not return next season. A team spokesperson confirmed to us the front office did not pick up his fourth year club option. They go bad, they get Dwight. Dwight leaves and they say, hey, well, we're just gonna be bad. You can't blame them because it had worked out all along the way when they decided to be bad. It is not a foolproof plan. The big takeaway, you said, I'm trying to be the best version of Cole Anthony possible. What is that? My goodness, season one is just nuts. The on-field product is so bad, but you just like can't look away. Behind the scenes, meanwhile, oh my gosh, it is so much worse. This is gonna be a good show. This is gonna be a good night. What's going on, everyone? Lou Ketrick, name of the show is Spectrum Sports 360. Thanks for spending your Sunday with us. Since around Thanksgiving, we kind of all looked at Tampa Bay's schedule and went, ooh, December 12th, yeah, circle it, star it, do whatever you got to do. Because that's probably going to be the only test they'll have from now until they get to the playoffs. The Bills are the lone team left on this slate with a winning record. Tom Brady's sitting there like, you, you really want to do this? You really want to talk about records? And Bills fans are like, uh-uh, nope. Hard pass, because they know what I'm about to say. Tom Brady all time against Buffalo. 32 and three, 32 and three. Most wins against any opponent in his career. This not so much a test early on, more like a third grade spelling quiz. Leonard Fournette, your word is TD. Can you use it in a sentence? Leonard Fournette ran 47 yards for a TD. That made it seven nothing. Tom Brady, your word is goat. Origin, him. Up top to Mike Evans, his 10th of the year. It's a 24-3 lead at the half. Brady all time when leading by 21 or more, 106-1. That one 11 years ago to the Bills. It might happen again. Josh Allen ran for a buck nine, 23-yard score there, made it a two-touchdown game. And five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Allen, slant, Gabe Davis, go Knights, charge on. Shh, his fourth of the year. Okay, now it feels like a test. Three-point game, minute left. Allen over the middle. Dawson Knox bobs and weaves like it's cool runnings. Allen throws for 308. They get down inside the red zone. Tyler Bass with a field goal forces OT. Tom Brady, his first overtime game since the 18 AFC Championship. Buffalo got the ball. They punted. Brady got it. He did the opposite. Rashad Perriman, deuces. Only catch of the game, walk off, and what felt like a quantum physics final at an Ivy League college, passes with flying colors. Speaking of subjects, how about some history? Bucks win this 133-27, that game winner from Perriman. Brady's 700th career touchdown, just his 33rd win over Buffalo. Good night all around.